whole new look, a whole new sound, same old presenter, same old guests. Well, same old guest in one, in one case this evening. Uh, I hope you like the new intro uh, jingle there. Um, I did pick it, probably dates me, but uh, judging from uh, some of the responses I've had on social media, uh, a change was somewhat overdue. Welcome to the show. Uh, apart from the backdrop there and one or two other things, nothing really has changed. We're going to talk about sport. Uh, quite a number of different sports, actually, because we have a roundup uh, during the course of the show in which we feature ice hockey, rugby league, etc. But principally, because I know you want it, it's football between now and about five to seven. And my goodness, isn't there an awful lot to discuss? Not just in Sheffield, but across the whole of Yorkshire. Many a team uh, has. Uh, Big things to play for between now and the end of the season. So I welcome our guest, our new guest to start with here, uh, a debut on the show for uh, Leon Robshaw of the Yorkshire Post. And you cover the breadth of the county, don't you, in football terms. You're not just what we are here and stick to Sheffield. No, I do get out and about into my 60s now. So uh, it's, it's been, a, been a long season enjoying it. It's been... Not a great sort of start to the, the new year for a lot of our teams, but hopefully, fingers crossed, there's a bit yeah. of time yet. People it? don't usually start off here by revealing their age. <laughs> I think when he said he's into his 60s, he's talking about the number of ma matches he's done this season. Yes, yes season campaigner. At yeah. least I hope so. And Kevin Gage, uh, welcome back, Kevin. Thank you. It does seem to have been an awful long time. <laughs> uh, it's not that I dropped you. you, you you dropped yourself, didn't you? Yeah, was, I thought it was a bit of overkill. <laughs> I thought I'd been in too much, so <laughs> yeah. I, I turned your invitation down a few months ago. You but I'm did. happy to be back. It's great. Yeah, to be well, back. it's great to see you back. And uh, you're, you, you never uh, come with empty pockets into the studio here. Uh, we don't call you for stat Stato, <laughs> Sheffield United Stato for nothing. So I'm sure that you're going to regale us at some point in the evening with. Uh, Details, facts, and figures. Well, well I, 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 I'm not sure where, how I've acquired this nickname that from me, probably. so kindly given me. But I'm yeah. sure I'm not that bad. But no, uh, I, do, I do like to country. I do like to find out bits and bobs of information. You know, and there's there's so many people around now who are into it as well. Um, and I do get lots of info off yeah, Twitter yeah. and you know Facebook and my son's an analyst yeah, so he gives me things so, and I find it fascinating you've just got to use it correctly and not yeah. just blurt out a load of statistics that don't mean anything at all absolutely yeah. we're, we're awash with statistics yeah. in football now and you've got to be very picky yeah. and very choosy Correct. I, I find it, it, it actually <laughs> makes the job I don't know if Leon agrees a little bit more challenging because you have to filter these out and think now which one of these is really telling it can be it can be quite nice. Like I did a game yesterday, Bradford against uh, Wigan, and literally nothing hardly happened in 90 minutes. The pitch was was horrendous. It was a swirling wind, so there was quite a few I, I actually dug out there. Cause, um, Bradford hadn't won for 10 home games, so I better use that one and uh, yes. various others. So it can dig you out of a, out of a hole. Definitely. Yeah, in a boring game with nothing happening, Certainly, you can yeah. use them to throw them all in. Throw them in. Throw them in. Yeah, I, I, it's rare for me, but I, I, I came up, well, I stayed up all night one night this week to work out what the lineup was for every Sheffield United game this season relative to Mark Duffy, who, as Kevin will attest, is a very important player for Sheffield United. And my Sheffield Telegraph column um, is testament to that today of what I found out that 25 matches he started in the league, that is, for United this season, and they've won 14 of those, which is a win percentage of 56% as opposed to when he's either been on the bench or hasn't been involved, when they've won only four of 12. Uh, sometimes a, a stat will just drop, and you'll think, well, that is also the evidence of my eyes. You yeah, know? that doesn't surprise me at all. I didn't know that until you mentioned it like earlier. That doesn't surprise me at all, because Mark Duffy's crucial to the way we play. I th I'm, I'm sure I saw somewhere that he's, uh, he's about fifth or sixth in the list of assists in the championship. I think he had nine out of our 43 goals or whatever. Um, and he, obviously he made that superb pass for Brooks the other night. Yes. So that must make it to 10 now. Um, so yeah, that's a high percentage of, our, of, of all our goals. He's either been, uh, he's assisted or scored, yeah. And the game, United were labouring, and it wasn't going anywhere when he uh, engineered a, a spray ball from, from midfield out to the right uh, the other night, which I think forced a throw, and it was from that the yep. cross came in and the first goal arrived. And, and he's involved so, with the throw as well. I think Bulldog yes. pass, uh, throws the ball to him, and they've got this wonderful... In fact, shall I shut up now because I'm giving away their <laughs> secrets? But they've got this wonderful routine where they get the ball back and Duffy puts it behind the left back 
and Bulldog's already on his way to get the yeah. cross in. It's, it, it works a couple of times a game, and the, the opposition just haven't sussed it yet. No. Well, and if they're watching, <laughs> I hope they don't. <laughs> well, he's got a big range, hasn't he? And the, the way he made that ball look so simple for the set for the second goal after that absolutely sensational layoff from Billy Sharp for the second yeah. goal the other night. I mean, I, I came out the other, the, uh, the other day and said, it, it, for me, it's the goal of the season. Yes, there are more spectacular goals, the Billy volley against Leeds, and there's been one or two other long-range shots, but for, as an all-round team goal, the, the speed of it and the simplicity of it uh, and the, the effectiveness of it was superb. It's unstoppable. And the ball from Duffy was, was inch perfect, literally. You know, cut the defence open. And Brooks, whether it was his first touch of the, of the ball, it may well have been. But he didn't have to, he didn't have to break his stride perfectly into his place and, it, and his finish was sublime into yeah. the corner. Well, Brilliant team goal. He's come on a ton, Duffy, hasn't he? I remember when he was at Doncaster a few years ago and um, you know, fighting a you know, relegation battle in the, in the championship and you know, he's like, probably like a fine wine. He's maturing with, with age, yeah. isn't he? And uh, you know, he's, a, he's a real nice, clever footballer, yeah. the sort that other, yeah. you know, other players in the team will really appreciate, and especially when he's not there as well. And, um, Remember you know, Scunthorpe as well. Yeah. I always thought he was a good Burnley player, well. but he yeah. played more as a winger then. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's been the fundamental thing to he, this he, form. He was show. a right winger at Scunthorpe when he first came yeah. to pro our prominence. And then, but go back to last season, beginning of last season, Chris started in his 4 2 4 4 4 2 formation. And Duffy was shoved out on the right hand side. Yes. You know, and that, a right yeah. midfielder. <laughs> so I think. In many ways, the because we lost those first four games or didn't do well at the yeah. start of the season, that forced Chris's hand, and it was brilliant for Duffy because he brought yeah. him inside. Yeah, it's a little bit like Coppinger at Doncaster, it was a bit, bit like that, wasn't it? He was sort of mainly a sort of flank player, and he's come in, and you know he's such a clever yes. footballer, he can link other people in, and um, yeah, he's uh, like I say, you only you know you really appreciate Duffy when he's sort of not there, especially, don't you really? And these games at the end of the season. The, it's going to be a lot of narrow games, isn't there? You know, sort of single goals and it, you know, little bits of magic can sort of mm. win you the game, and that's where it, you know, hopefully, he'll come into into his own. Well, in the same respect, we'll talk about David Brooks in a minute as well. Um, Sheffield United, two points outside the uh, playoffs, with key games in particular against Middlesbrough and Bristol City. Sheffield Wednesday, al almost static in every respect. I mean, it's only one win in eleven under Jos Lukai, one win in twelve overall. And yet, you know, for each poor result, they seem to maintain this seven or eight point gap between themselves and the, the bottom three. It's eight points, in fact, now, courtesy yeah. of the point they got against Bolton, even though that was a disappointment. It's been a dreadful season, hasn't it? And they're, st mm. they're st stuck in a rut. Obviously, we know all about the injuries and everything. But it just seems at the minute, every time they play, and, you know, they haven't won, the first thing is you just rush into the dressing room to see how everybody else has sort of done, really. And it's almost like they're going to stay up by default, mm. almost. You know, there's, there's about five or six really poor, poor sides, but who've, who've had awful seasons. But there's, there's going to be a few that get away with it. What I found interesting, though, following the Ipswich defeat, where it's you know caused more doom and gloom around Hillsborough, team booed off, uh, was the manager came into the press room and was genuinely unaware of the other results of te yeah. teams around them, yeah. um, which some people criticised. But actually, if you turn it on its head, you could because he's maintained all along. No, we won't go down. I'm not worried about that. No. Uh, so you could argue, it, instead of head in the sand, it's quite an impressive sign of his belief that they're going to stay up. You don't know if it's conscious, really. But he's not actually a, a bit of a ploy by him, really. Is he? That, is he that sort of manager to sort of play mind games almost, and you know, you, you know sort of use that as a tool? Yeah. But. They desperately need something. I mean, the game against Leeds on, on Saturday, and um, it's probably the, the least sort of heralded game between the two sides that I've yes. known for quite a few years. Um, both of them are desperate for a catalyst, aren't they, just to sort of get, get things they going are. for the, to have not, a smooth end to the season. Not that Leeds are in any danger, but symbolically, Paul Heckingbottom wants to get an impressive result under his belt, doesn't he? Yeah. You and know, it's been a difficult start for him. They both need something to, to trigger, trigger off the sort of running for the running for the season so that, you know, at least they give the fans a little bit of something to to hang on on to really for the next sort of yeah. um, few weeks and both managers need to lift their personal standing it's a hell of a difficult job going to Leeds isn't it? I don't, how did you Kevin view the, the hacking bottom appointment there by, by Leeds uh, I, I could see the logic in it yeah um, it's, it's a it's a good move for him isn't it it's a big club and he, he'll want to 
as you, as you rightly say, Leon, you know, want to finish the season well because it gives you not momentum for next season, but it just everybody finishes on a bit of a nice, a nice high, if you like. Yeah. So he won't want things to slide off at the end of this season. But from a playing point of view, that I mean, the players will want to impress him. They'll want to yeah. finish the season well because because they'll be in his in his foremost thoughts for starting off next season. Everybody's got a clean slate, but he'll be thinking, well. You know, such and such played well from the end of last yeah, season. He's a yeah. good player, so they all want to make impressions. There is a worry, isn't there? And it's ridiculous to even broach this subject so early that already <coughs> he's under judgment. Some of the quotes that I read this week, some of the comments from the chairman, Andrea Rad Radrizani at Leeds, appear to put a slight question mark over Paul Hackingbottom even now when he was suggesting, you know, yeah. we're looking for results to improve. Yeah, there's, uh, been, there's been a fair Did you bit. pick that up as well? Did you see that in there? Well, I mean, there's been a, a fair bit of sort of colourful stuff from the from the chairman yeah. there in the, the, the last few weeks. And I think Paul, Paul will, back, will back himself, and I, I know him quite well, but I think he'll also know that if he does a half-decent job at least, and even if he's there 18 months, he'll get all the jobs on on the on the back yeah. of it really but what's concerning is that it's well known that uh, victor orta isn't it and the, ba the background yeah. is picking the players doing all the recruitment um, yeah it's been a bit of a, a bit of a mixed record really he was at middlesbrough and his record there was was really poor in terms of you know getting players and the ones that have sort of proved to be good buys it's the same at leeds really they've took a punt on you know a, a lot of um, continental players most of them haven't, haven't really come off. Saez definitely has. Yes, he's, he's cost about three billion pounds, and he, he does look a class act. But most of the others, the job is pretty much out, and I think they're going to have to um, so, get so, rid of a few in the So summer. why don't clubs and owners see the light on on this kind of thing? Why don't they look at the Sheffield United model, for instance, or even the Cardiff City model, where Neil Warnock is yet again putting a strong promotion bid together, and say? These managers do know a lot more than these owners, actually, and and picking somebody to come in as a sporting director. You know, I, am I being old-fashioned here or <laughs> no, what? No, because I, I think you're totally right. I think uh, I don't see where it was all going, to be honest. I mean, no. it's crazy, isn't it? Tried to, there was talk of somebody coming in at Sheffield United, you know, above, not, yes. above Chris, this this Belgian guy. Yes. And I'm not on the inside. I don't know. I Van just Winkle. read. Yeah, <laughs> I just yeah. read what I read, you know, I get the rumours. Um, I would imagine over Chris's dead bod body, you know, Absolutely. he would not have that. Oh, no, he will not. Yeah, it's not, no, no, not, no. not going to no. happen. He's, no. he's got his trusted staff. They know what Chris Wilder wants. I can only speak from yeah. Sheffield United point of view. They know what Chris Wilder wants and requires in, in a player uh, as regards recruitment and looking for people. And um, but it's simple, some, isn't somebody, it? somebody drafted him from abroad. Yeah. It's not going to work. I mean, how many have done actually done well, really? You know. You, one or two. I mean, there was like the, the Camoli at uh, at Tottenham. Then he went to Liverpool. Then then he left really for for every one who's done okay. There's probably about four or five who've uh, who've sort of quickly and then, left. And left really. It's okay having facilitators to get the deal done, but oh, it's yeah, got to be facilitated to do what the manager wants in and out. And then with all the Both ways, with think. all the agents and the agencies and the ownership issues, etc., etc., yeah. you're muddying the waters all the time, so, aren't yeah, you? You don't know why this particular director is using this kind of group of players, you know, or, or seems yeah, to be favouring these yeah. group of players. You don't know whether he's, he's got ulterior motives because he's getting a backhander or something. You know. well, who, kno who knows? What I mean, especially at championship level, it's not really rocket science, isn't it? Really, you know, you get three or four, you know, good players to. Add on to what you've what you've got really, and um, you know a bit of quality in a few positions, and you've got half a chance of really good team spirit and organisation, and you, you should have a half decent season really, shouldn't you, if, if things drop into place? Yeah, and it's not rocket science, no, is it? No, I don't think so. It really no. isn't. Um, so it's not always foreign owners either, but they're they're, no. they're trying to complicate something that's extremely yeah. simple, yeah. Yeah. almost because of uh, arrogance in in a way. No, I, I think it's that. Some of them want to play football manager for real, and this gives them an opportunity yeah. to say, well, instead of a virtual game, it's a, it's a real game that mm. we can play here. Do you detect that? I, I suppose you could counter it by saying, if you look at the Wolves model, I mean, the yes. guys come in and spent um, you know, umpteen yeah. million pounds. Yes. And uh, he's having a, an, an amount of success. Obviously, at the top of the league. Yes, but and if I you've don't got know what, what they've spent, but it's working for them. If you've got the money, that huge amount of money, that's a, a big advantage, of isn't it? it is, yeah. In, I mean, in, obviously, the Leeds chairman. Um, he had a, a bit of a rant, didn't he? Yes. Partway through the game against Wolves, um, 
on about the sort of uh, this po uh, policy that they're, they're operating. But I'm sure if he could have maybe thought of it first and could have done, he certainly w um, would have done. It's all about good, you know, it's good quality players, and Wolves have, Wolves have done it, and fair play to them. I know there's one or two. Um, Championship rivals who aren't happy with it, but they've um, they've certainly walked the walk this season, haven't they? Yes, they certainly have. Um, how do you see the season panning out now for Sheffield Wednesday, uh, Leon? You know, I've steadfastly said they're not going down, but I'm saying it with it with less confidence week by week because they do need a couple of wins, and 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 you're looking where's it going to come from? Yeah, you sort of look at the games. Don't you? I mean, they've got a, a few home games at the end of the season. They've got like some, is it Reading and, and, and Norwich that look sort of half half decent on on paper, but you know, got some other tough ones as well. Fulham at home, and um, this, well, I think this this Leeds game it, it is a big game, isn't it? Really, if they can just get a, a win, a, you know, a win, a good result, or a bit of a morale boost heading into the international break. But you just wonder where the next um, win's coming from, really, don't you? I mean, it's it's well, been so it's patchy it's the form. I know they may have a, a few players. Back, uh, th Bannon this weekend, and Hutchinson but... in contention, I think, fit again, Van yeah. Aiken, um, yeah. uh, Forestieri back in training, although it'll be a two or three weeks following the international break anyway yeah. before he's back, but it's symbolically that's important. Well, well so I, the only thing I can say is I read something uh, this week that it might be a, a record low point that, uh, that gets you down this yes. year, because the, yeah. all the teams at the bottom are, are really yeah. performing poorly. Yeah. So... Um, I think historically over the last 30 years, I think it's 47 points yeah. or 46 points yeah. or something, yeah. should that get you safe-ish, you know, that, mm. that full spot. This year it might be 30, 37, 38, yeah. 39, 40. I think if you've got, got to play each other as well, haven't they? Yeah, yeah so they people are always going to take yeah. points yeah. off yeah. each other. So, yeah. so, you know, Wednesday, Wednesday might, they might, they might not win a game and still stay up on 38. Theoretically, yeah. it's yeah. possible. It's possible, yeah, because the possible. others aren't very yeah. good at all. But I mean, I'm sure they wouldn't like to finish the season like that. And, you know, it's important to raise hopes for next time. No, if they can get a good result, yeah. can just, just even one win, it can just, it probably will really settle them down. And, and cement and the manager the a bit off. more than he is at the moment as well, which yeah. I think he, he needs that. Yeah. Um, you, you never come in empty handed, uh, Kevin. And you and I were discussing uh, a Twitter site, uh, Blades Analytics. I tell you what, Blades fans, you know, if you if you're trawling down your uh, your timeline sometime, have a look <laughs> at Blades Analytics. It's uh, at Blades Our Life underscore ninety, and this guy you've been following for a while. And this is where you got all your best <laughs> well, yeah, material he's, from. He's, he's very, very good, not just uh, on the analytics side, but he seems to, he seems to sum up uh, big sections of the game very, very well, or how yeah. we've played in this game or what we should look forward to this game. And he's one of a few people out there who are very, very good at And they're, yeah. all, they're only amateurs, they're not professionals. Frighteningly good. But, yeah, very, yeah, yeah, very, very good statistically. Yeah. And uh, the thing about the analy analytics and uh, statistics is, as you said before, we, there's no point just churning them out. You've got to watch the game and then and then apply them to the yeah, games yes. and watch, you know, yeah. and yeah. they make some sense. But uh, yeah, it's just one of the few people I follow. But I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't know who the guy is. If you're out there watching, you know, yeah, make yourself puts the hours come and have a beer with me down. once. Yeah, I'd, love yeah. to, I'd love to talk to you. But uh, yeah, obviously he puts his puts his uh, homework in and comes up with some brilliant stuff. Yeah. So I think so people, there's, people no, like there's no news. Stats lamp this week from you. It's uh, no, this no. I mean, oh well. I, I just, okay. I just, Thanks very much, Kevin. That's it. <laughs> Next time, I just, no. I just retweet <laughs> things uh, and, and put my little bits and bobs on. You know. Yeah. Um, but um, rather than follow some nondescript celebrity, you know, <laughs> whoever it may be on yeah. Twitter, you know, follow some 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 football people like that. It's oh, fascinating. Some of them. I, I follow very few players, but not because they're in any way boring. They're not. It's just because. They're pretty gagged. They can't say anything interested no. anyway. No. So what's the point? There's one or two that I do follow who uh, are bright enough to mm. go around that and be entertaining. The exceptions but most the rule, just most say, oh, brilliant lads, fantastic performance, good three points, thanks to the fans. The thing you know, over and over again. I, I've got to the point, maybe it's just me. So they can say, sorry, you not a criticism. I, I think sometimes when players, especially after a defeat, they sort of, it's become routine now, isn't it, you know? Apologising to the supporters and yeah. you know all that sort of thing. I can I think it can be a little bit of a cop out in some respects, can't it? I think the ones yeah. who really really do hurt take it home with them and, and uh, put their head under under the blanket, whatever. <laughs> I, th I think and, I think you you're know, right, Alan. You players these days have got to be so careful what oh, they say. I, I feel sorry for them. Really, and, 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 and also, 
what what people tend to do now is they is they just go back years uh, looking at your old text. Yeah, yeah. they do. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. another story. We'll pick that up five minutes, and we'll be back with lots more chats. See you then.